Okay, thank you viewers. Uh, this is our last segment um, of uh, our interview. So, Comrade Gisai, uh, my last question is that, so what is the way forward? Should workers, youth, unions still support the MDC uh, in, in, in fight with the, the, with the Junda? Thank you. I think we've already addressed the question of the continued relevance of um, the MDC. Well, what is clear is that um, we workers, uh, youth, uh, rural farmers now face a total war. What we face now is uh, what you could call a battle of ideas and a battle of uh, leadership. What is clear is that the, M the leadership of the MDC and the leadership of ZANU-PF have become the same. In uh, ZANU-PF, after the defeat of the nationalists led by Mugabe in the November 2017 coup, the faction that won this, the internal civil war in ZANU-PF, uh, the neoliberals, um, the, the neoliberals, those who are prepared to do everything that the IMF, the World Bank says, um, those who are prepared to follow what big business says, those who are ready to rep the diamonds, the gold, uh, the resources of this country for the interests of multinationals. That's what they mean by big business. And uh, they want to do so by um, totally, totally squeezing and plundering rural farmers, workers, going back to Chibaro. So the point is that ideologically, this is where the ruling class has now become. They've become ideological twins. That is in the MDC, in ZANU-PF, they are now the same. Uh, big business, you've seen Munanga go create what he calls uh, a presidential advisory committee. It is not a coincidence that in that committee, there's not a single trade unionist, there's not a single worker. It is not a coincidence mm -hmm. that for the two years that he has been in power, Munanga Gwa has not met a single federation of trade unions. Uh, he has not appointed a single trade unionist in the two cabinets that he has done. So it's not a coincidence. They are very clear. And Mnangagwa proudly proclaims himself to be a disciple of uh, Margaret Thatcher, mm. the goddess mm. of austerity. Uh, you saw how happy he was when he got uh, peanuts of uh, two million uh, from America, uh, from, from Trump. Uh, and uh, you saw how Chamisa would say we're going to be given 15 billion. So, for those reasons, uh, the elites are now together in terms of business, in terms of NGOs, in terms of political parties. We call this elite convergence. And this elite convergence, they converge around the idea of, uh, of uh, introducing a second ISAP, a, a, a second um, structural adjustment program, austerity program. Mm. Uh, we, are, we have now just started the foundations. You've just seen what has happened now with uh, the removal of subsidies from fuel under the instruction of the IMF. You've also seen now that uh, we now have moved to more or less free floating of uh, the local currency, which is now around A. One is to eight, one is to nine. Mm. Again, under the instruction of uh, the IMF. But it's unlikely that um, Nanga Guam Tulichwenga can proceed with this. Uh, full-scale austerity program without bringing on board uh, Chamisa and the MDC, BT, Nguye, Koutat and the others. Because uh, without that, it's likely that uh, this country is going to explode. Mm. Uh, what we saw in January 2019 in the national shutdown would be, uh, would be a tea party, would be a walk in the park. Um, we are going to face uh, national shutdowns and strikes and revolts that are a thousand times more similar if not bigger to 97. So they at least know that. This is why they are likely to come together and not just have this ideological elite convergence, but also have a political a convergence. That's what I see likely to happen. And when that happens, um, the working class, the poor, the rural farmers are going to face total war. So they have to prepare themselves. And um, the elites are trying to persuade whether it's rural farmers who are being told by ZANU-PF that they have patience uh, within two years, things would have stabilized. Whether it is workers who are being told by MDC who now give you a quota in MDC, uh, if we have a, a transitional authority, uh, things will improve and uh, it will be like what happened during the second GNU. The elites are trying to persuade the poor people, persuade workers, that the way forward is austerity 
as a solution to this crisis. The way forward is national dialogue. The way forward is uh, social dialogue. The way forward is another uh, TNF uh, like NEDLAC in South Africa. But all that is poison. All that is nonsense. The way forward is that austerity does not work. Austerity kills. Because this is what happened in ISA. Mm. This is why workers ended up calling it eternal suffering of African people. This is why uh, ISA failed, led to the closure of factories. Mm. Manufacturing used to contribute more than 25% uh, of manufacturing uh, with GDP. It went down to less than 14%. Over 50,000 jobs were lost during ISAPs. Rural areas were devastated. Prisons were devastated. But this didn't just happen in Zimbabwe. It happened in Zambia. It happened in Nigeria. It mm. happened in Argentina. It happened in Thailand. So across the world, uh, neoliberalism failed. Neoliberalism and austerity cannot work. I repeat what I said when we started this program. Because it, can, it only worsens the contradictions of capitalism. The contradictions of capitalism are that workers, farmers, and the poor of the world are too poor because of austerity to afford the goods that are produced by our factories, uh, by the businesses. And uh, that contradiction cannot be resolved as long as society leaves the wealth of society in the hands of less than 5% of society. Mm. Today, eight billionaires control and have as much wealth as over half the population of the world. Your Bill Gates, uh, your, your uh, Bezos, uh, in places like Zimbabwe, mm. your 10 uh, richest people led by Strife Masiwa control more than 60-70% uh, of the wealth of this country. You could say the same thing in South Africa. So capitalism does not have a solution to the contradiction that uh, productive forces have now massively developed well, uh, be, uh, and globalized. But uh, that wealth is controlled by a small number of people and the rest of the world cannot consume it. Mm -hmm. Capitalism does not have a solution to the contradiction that... Uh, Productive forces have become global. Factories have become global. Business have become global. And the only way you can uh, use this uh, advanced technology and uh, globalize businesses is to break down the borders. Mm. You, there's no way a small country like Zimbabwe with 14 million people or even South Africa with 60 million people can uh, produce and compete with global companies from China, from Germany, from Japan, from India. Uh, in places like India and China with 1 billion people. You need to break down the little borders of Zimbabwe, Zambia, and you have one big regional country mm. with 200 million people in Sadiq. Uh, and at the same time, you ensure that wealth, you have public programs mm. that build schools, that electrify our rural areas, uh, that build hospitals, uh, and these will provide jobs for people. It will provide demand for businesses to be built. You have to ensure that production is done not for the profits of a tiny number of capitalists, but production is done for the human needs of our people, mm. and therefore production goes forward. Now, those contradictions cannot be solved under capitalism, let alone under neoliberalism. Mm. So for that reason, the way forward is that uh, workers, students, youth, rural farmers, uh, war veterans, ordinary war veterans, must reject the leadership and ideology of elites, whether this is in MDC or any of the opposition parties, whether this is in ZANU-PF, whether it's ANC in South Africa, whether or whatever various parties that we have of the rich. What, we have, they, what they have to do is reject any party that is based on the ideology of neoliberalism, austerity, and capitalism. Um, that is a battle of ideas. Mm -hmm. They must not have illusions. And simultaneously, they must get together and begin to build united fronts of workers, rural farmers, informal sector workers, and within those which will be based on the ideology of rejecting uh, the concept that uh, only elites can lead parties, mm -hmm. only middle classes can lead parties, only professors doctors, lawyers, uh, business people are the only people who have the right to lead. 
we have already seen how workers were able to build and lead the MDC. We saw it in Zambia. Mm. But when those workers, when those youth lack a grounded ideology uh, of anti-capitalism, an ideology of revolutionary socialism, we can see how their struggles are then eventually hijacked. Mm. So the second fundamental thing is workers and the poor of Zimbabwe must reject this nonsense now about, oh, let's go and do a petition to Mnangagwa, uh, to the Junda. Uh, you know, let's go and uh, see the president. Let's have national dialogue. The solution in Zimbabwe right now is not a TNF. The solution is not national dialogue. The solution is what we did in January, but do it a thousand times more. What is agent right now to ensure that cooking oil is available at a price that is affordable by ordinary people? To ensure that our children go to schools that are decent, where there are teachers who are able to teach them, and not teachers who are starving, and that our hospitals have got drugs and medicines, is not further talks. The only language that Munanga, what the generals, the only language that big business, which is increasing prices mm. in shops like Spa, uh, like OK, like Pick and Pay, TM, the only language that capitalists like Masiwa, who are increasing the price of bundles, the only language they understand is the language of mass action, the language of Jambanja, the language of general strike, the language of shutdown. What is most urgent in Zimbabwe today is that the union, the radical union federations, the radical trade union leaders uh, must get together and organize forums, labor forums at workplaces, organize community forums in the townships, organize forums uh, at, at growth points, uh, but crucially starting with the labor forums in the workplace, and fight together and call for a second national shutdown general strike, uh, which is a thousand times bigger than what we did in January mm. uh, in 2019. Not, no single worker, it's good that young teachers are promising to go on strike, young nurses are promising to go on strike, but they must learn. The, le the doctors went on strike for 42 days, a powerful strike, but they were not able to win uh, uh, salaries in, in foreign currency. The teachers went for a strike on a week. You cannot have a strike by one sector, whether it is teachers, it is doctors, it is bank workers. What we require is a total shutdown by the workers of this country, supported by the unemployed youth of this country, supported by the students of our colleges, our universities, the pupils of our schools, supported by vendors, supported by tobacco farmers. Mm. That is the only way forward, united action. And we have seen that this works. We saw it in January. It is that which has brought the Zubkos that have come today but are still not enough. Mm. In Sudan, it is when the workers and the poor did that, that they threw out Al-Bashir. Mm. That is how they threw out Mubarak. So this time, we, the working people must be ready to go all out. And at uh, And uh, it must not just be good fuel, price must come down. We want workers to be paid in forex. We want rural farmers to be paid in forex. Makorokoza to be paid in forex. Um, but of course, this forex payment should not be the US dollar because the US dollar leads to deindustrialization. It's the most, it's the most powerful currency in the world, which is used as a global currency. So if you use it, it means our businesses are not able to compete uh, regionally against South African companies that are using a weaker rent or Chinese. That is using a yuan. Rather, we must move it initially to the rand. Because South Africa is our biggest trading partner uh, for Zimbabwe. We have over a million Zimbabweans who are in South Africa who can give us remittances. So we must remove the RTGS. It must be non-negotiable that this currency called the, the RTGS must be removed. Already the government itself is now started saying that its own contracts that were done before the monetary policy must be in... Uh, in uh, uh, you must read them using foreign currency. Mm. Uh, Parastators are doing the same thing. We must demand that for workers, for rural farmers. And what is clear for workers is that we must simply just reject the issue of negotiating wages now at NECs, collective bargaining. It doesn't work. What works is that public sector workers, private sector workers must simply demand that there must be a minimum wage in forex for all workers.
Mm. And then once you set up that minimum wage for in forex for all workers, NECs then negotiate above that. Mm. But to win a minimum wage in forex for all workers requires all workers to fight together. The Labour Act in section 19 and 20 allows the government to actually decree that. So that must be a non-negotiable thing. But we will only be listened to. Munanga go will only seriously talk. The big business will only seriously talk when the factories are, are silent. When uh, the schools are not teaching. When the hospitals are thin. They will be paid. They will be sacrificed. But pain, because not pain, they could be. And for austerity is already pain. And mm. they're telling us that we have to have pain. Mm. Mm. But when we take pain by having all-out mass action, uh, it means that we've reduced the amount of pain we're going to have. We've reduced the duration of pain that we're going to have. So that is what is urgent. And uh, our appeal as international socialist organization to the trade unions, to the youth workers leaders, is that if there are some amongst you who are not ready to fight, don't worry about them. They have become co-opted, they have become reactionaries, or they are cowards. Mm, mm. When Changirai in uh, January 1997, when workers, nurses went on strike, Changirai, Matongo, Mzengerere, um, and other leaders, Kumirai Kudenga, of that period, ignored the majority of the ZCTU General Council who wanted to continue begging and pleading with ZANU PF. And Changirai and a minority of radical leaders then called for a general strike in support of the nurses' strike. Mm. They nearly fired him as general secretary of ZCTU. But because Changirai had moved with the mood of the people, he was then able to have their support. And by 97, we had the biggest general strike in this country. This country exploded. That is the challenge that is facing the radical young leaders of the ZCTU today, led by Mtasa. That is the challenge... Uh, and others a challenge facing the leaders of uh, civil servants teachers today uh, like in PTUZ wana Raymond Majongwe wana Masara Oreko Atuz the young doctors wana Mzoremba wana Bebe they must be prepared to take the bull by the horn they must be prepared to lead the masses it may be that many other union leaders wana Mtero wana Naufauz these are the challenges that they face what they must know is that the workers, the ordinary people, are ready to fight. This is why when Munanga was emissary, went to the MDC Congress mm. and said that we must have social dialogue between Munanga and uh, Chamisa. The ordinary rank and file of the MDC in Ascot said, no, we don't want dialogue. They boot him. They are right. Mm. And that is what they must do. And that, that is what they must support. So that for us is the way forward. But fundamentally, to learn from our history. Uh, if you are going to just revolt, go on general strikes, go on occupations, uh, it is not enough. We are saying we must build a united front of the victims of austerity. Mm. Those who are benefiting from a big business, from austerity, neoliberalism, have now converged. They have elite convergence. Mm. We must now have convergence of the poor and working people. Mm. The elites, the rich, the politicians, that are the peza urumbo, zanuravo, kwa peza urumbo. So, if we don't fight, we are going to die. If we fight, we may die. So, we might as well as fight. Mm. But, as workers and ordinary people, to find kwa varumbo, eh, wano find kwa kufura meso, kufura maziso, eh, tine slogan, iso ya tino tiwa rombo tamuka, which means that we must reject neoliberalism, we must reject uh, austerity, we must reject capitalism, and we must uh, fight uh, for socialism, not just in Zimbabwe, regionally and globally, and build a united front that will take on ISA. So without building this united front, a united front that brings in workers, a united front that brings in uh, youth, informal sector, rural farmers, uh, we will not be able to take on. Our lessons from ISA is that it is when that happened, when we fought back as workers, as students, uh, as farmers, when land invasion started, as ordinary war veterans, that is how we are able to defeat ISA mm, mm. Uh, Those It is the general strikes, it is the mass action, it is the student class boycotts, it is the farm invasions, that stopped Mugabe implementing ISA. 
and force them to end up going accepting land and force Mugabe to end up accepting the Labour Act of 2002. That is the lesson that we have today. And the challenge is for us to do that. But we, as long as we do not ground ourselves ideologically, these struggles will be co-opted again. And then fundamentally, even if we, as we have this broad front, we must now build mass revolutionary socialist parties mm. that will ensure that our struggles will be able to last the distance. Mm. And these revolutionary socialist parties must be bigger than what we're able to build in ISO uh, in, the, in the end of the 90s. Because if they are small, they will not be able to succeed against the tsunami uh, of uh, neoliberals, of bosses and the rich. And even if they are big enough, they will not be enough if they are in Zimbabwe alone. Mm. They must be built with other socialist forces, wake up, workers' forces, workers' parties in uh, South Africa, crucially, uh, where already that process has started with the socialist revolutionary workers' parties. Uh, we've seen that in Zambia, the socialist party in Zambia, and other forces in the region. We may be small initially, but the crisis, the deepening crisis of capitalism means that uh, the chances that more and more workers, more and more students, more and more youth will join those parties and not be misled by parties like the EFF led by Malema, who are talking this same language, but at night go and wine and dine with the multinational, with the rant barons, with the rich and uh, who are massively involved in the corruption. It is, that is no longer the solution. The solution is mass revolutionary parties led by the working class. But those parties must be internally democratic. Mm. The emancipation of the working class is an act of the working class. So said Karl Marx and uh, Engels, the founders of modern socialism and communism. So we cannot have parties that are run from the top. We cannot have rat parties that are not internally democratic. We cannot have revolutionary parties that are led by elites, even if these elites are trade union leaders, self-proclaimed communists. They have to be led by the rank and file working class, internally democratic, built on socialism. That way, the world is there for the working class. Mm -hmm. And as Marx and Angels says, the workers of Zimbabwe, the workers of South Africa, Zambia, Africa, the workers of Europe, the workers of Asia have nothing to lose. The farmers, the ordinary people have nothing to lose but their chains and the world to gain. Viva socialism, viva the working people of Zimbabwe, Africa and the world, Abasha